Hello there guys, Feng here, and welcome to Craft the World. Okie dokie then, so Craft the World is a crafting game, would you believe it? <laughs> it's got the, it's got kind of a nice style of Terraria mixed with Draw Fortress, it's pretty damn cool. It's currently in early access, um, it has been for quite a while now, uh, I've only really obviously just got round to... Um, covering it because me being ill and all. Yay! So yeah, as you can probably tell I'm recovering pretty well. I'm not really coughing that much at all now. Uh, before we actually crack onto the game now, I do want to uh, talk about something. I've now gone and invested in a pop shield. Yay! So that's going to do two things. One, it's going to stop um, the popping that I make, hopefully. <laughs> Um, but secondly, it might also mean that my vocals might be a wee bit more quiet than usual. So I need to take them into account when I record. So yeah, but that's that's on my end. That's 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 fine. Okay, options menu. There's not really an options menu. <laughs> now bearing in mind, it's not a first-person shooter. I always say this: it's not a first-person shooter, so you don't really need that much options so you've got all the basic um, sound options in fact you got really not you got separate ambient slider which is always nice you got your language obviously I speak English so we're gonna have it in English obviously and resolution um, now one actually uh, peeve I have about the game is that it doesn't have a proper laptop resolution but that's it. <laughs> that's the only, uh, the only complaint I've got about it at the moment. It's got now a laptop bloody resolution, which is a little bit annoying. It means I get to play with uh, black bars, which is fantastic. Um, but since we're playing on the PC, it's fine. It's in 1080. And it runs pretty damn easy. I, I bet you it'll run on a toaster. It's pretty damn, pretty damn optimized, to say the least. Okay. There's a couple of ways to play the game. Uh, we have campaign and custom. Now this one I actually need to delete. That was my uh, test run one. As you can see, I've actually done a little bit of the campaign. That was my first ever game. Uh, spent yeah five and nearly nearly uh, five five hours and forty minutes. I need Jesus Christ and start the second one. I realised that one was fucked up. But yeah, so there's a couple of ways you can play the game. We have campaign mode and custom game. So campaign mode's pretty cool. Um, you have your you have, you do have a few, you have like three levels at the moment. They might add more. You know, it it is early access. It's quite close to being done now, judging by the um, game version. But yes, at the moment there's only three levels. Now the first level is pretty easy. Obviously, it's easy. It's a small world size. It's got average weather events and it's hilly. Fantastic. Second level, a bit harder. As you can see, it's normal. It's an icy world. Etc. Etc. And then obviously you've got the large world, which is a bit harder. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's actually pretty cool. Now the great thing about the campaign mode is that it does it does have a tutorial. The uh, first level does, so it does tell you where to play the game, which is actually uh, quite nice as well because it it's it is a little bit complex in some cases, but it, it's it's still fairly casual. So yeah. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to play a, a custom game. Now the great thing about custom game is that you can customise uh, quite a few of the options, which is what we're going to do. So we're going to keep it at small size, we're going to keep the weather events at uh, average as well as the forest world. So tech mode, you're probably wondering what the hell this is. Okay, so the campaign mode actually has a tech tree. Yeah. Now the great thing about tech tree is that it gives you a sense of progression. It also means you have to start off making very basic tools, and it's gonna take it's gonna take you a while to get to the end of that tech tree. The tech tree is actually pretty massive, and it's actually probably the best way to play the game as well. In sandbox, you get access to every cra every um, recipe, which is probably bo really boring to be quite honest to have access to every single recipe right from the get-go but um it's there anyway if the options there now normally the game is played in normal so what this means is if a dwarf dies he'll respawn in i think it's five or six minutes time something like that 
yeah but in permanent death mode you guessed it it plays like a roguelike once a dwarf dies he stays dead there is not there, there isn't another dwarf to replace him fantastic best mode in the game <laughs> 11 out of 10 game of the year right uh, we're going to stick with normal difficulty because the game can be um, pretty pretty hard sometimes. So let's go. Let's play the game. Okie dokie. So as you can see, we have spawned right there. Now the world is randomly generated. Each world is randomly generated. So you're not going to have the same world twice. And this is actually really fantastic. Look at all that fucking stone. That is fantastic. Okie dokie. Uh, we've got our shop over there. I'll talk about that a bit later. But for now, we need to get cracking, yeah? Um, night time, bad things happen, and we want to make sure we're in a safe position before those bad things happen. So, we're going to go ahead and harvest uh, trees, harvest wood. So, pretty much the pretty much the same style as dwarf witches. You basically uh, assign stuff for dwarfs to do, and they'll go and do it if they feel like it. So as you can see, we're going to chop down some trees because we need wood. Wood is pretty essential to start off with. Now our dwarf has got really crap equipment. So we've got Blaine here. It was a smithy, which is a really nice um, profession to have. Unfortunately, it's not a nice profession to have at the start. <laughs> and as you can see, these are empty, these two here. So what you can actually do is... Um, when you actually mine and stuff and basically just gather resources and whatnot, basically anything you do, uh, you can actually have spawn a skill book. Now these skill books range from a lot of things like fisher, uh, climbing, uh, miner, etc, etc. And with these books you can actually teach um, dwarfs new skills, which is really cool. And as you can see, um, we've got items, we've got like a classic item slot here, which is fantastic. Um, that's usually the axe slot, the weapon slot, the pickaxe slot, armor, 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 and accessory. And as you can see, we've also got health and hunger. And um, there's no first, unfortunately. So yeah, you can't make room, which is unfortunate and sad. Hey, we completed the task. So let's actually talk about this as well. So the game has got quite a nice progression system. Uh, basically, you're rewarded for doing stuff like cutting down trees and digging a tunnel and completing a shelter. You get rewards, which is usually XP. Obviously, the the harder the task is, the more XP you get. But also, some uh, tasks also give you items. Items are also randomly generated, so you're never going to get the same item twice from a quest, which is fantastic. Now, you might have figured, well, I've only got one dwarf here, so what's going on here? So the game has a leveling system, as you probably already guessed by looking at the tasks. So as you can see, we're level 1. Now at each level, you gain access to another dwarf. Another dwarf gets teleported down from wherever the fuck they come from, Dwarfland or whatever. And yeah, so pretty much um, try and get your level up as high as possible, as quick as possible. And that gives you more dwarfs to play around with. Indeed. Now, we're going to use a, a bit of magic. Yeah. So every game you'll start off with uh, this this portal spell, really probably the most useful spell you'll ever have. This will basically give you a timed gateway to somewhere else. So for example, we're going to stick it right there. That's going to give us four minutes, and it'll get, and it will actually open a teleport right next to the stockpile. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to mine some stone because stone is extremely important to start off with really important to make some uh, very uh, low tier crappy tools but we need those crappy tools to survive so um thought there was something there. there's also wildlife and we we will actually end up killing this wildlife you can't keep them as pets unfortunately which would be a lot more beneficial especially for stuff like the the sheep here that would be a lot more beneficial so you can re this wool but to be honest, animals do regenerate over time anyway, even if you kill off the population, even if there's like no sheep left. Um, a sheep will randomly spawn eventually anyway, so it's no big deal. And the wool is very important to make stuff like rope and shit like that. Now unfortunately, it doesn't seem like he's really doing that much of a good job again, that bloody stone. So he needs to hurry up. Now you're probably thinking, this is really slow pace at the moment. Well, you can speed up time. 
if you click RV, you can speed up 1.5 or 2. And we'll stick it at 2 for the time being, because at the end of the day, all we're doing really is waiting for that stone to be harvested. So once we got that, and then we need to think about making a... Oh, that needs to be harvested as well, shit. We need to think about making a, a base pretty quickly. But to make a base, we are going to need a pickaxe. And for the pickaxe, we are going to need stone and wood. Which is something that should be being done now. Get over there. Now you probably notice as well, um, this has got a 2 on it. So each each spell that you use actually costs mana. And as you can see, I've got 6 mana over here. Mana does regenerate over time, as you can see. We've already got 1 mana regenerated um, from the 6 so far. Which is fantastic. Um... But yeah, it's actually a pretty cool mechanic. I actually really like it, especially with teleport. This teleport spell, you'll be using a hell of a lot. Unfortunately, he doesn't seem to be doing much else. He's he's just gathering, and that's pretty much it. He should be going over there and collecting the stone there, because that's what we really need. Come on. It's it's going to be night time soon if you don't hurry up. Get your ass over there now. Well, I'm going to have to open another bloody portal. Now, you can open a separate portal if you want, or you can actually click on the portal, and it'll extend the time, which is fantastic. Uh, yay, he's finally getting the stone. Fantastic. So, uh, we're definitely going to make uh, some from this stone. Now, I'm actually going to just pause that two seconds and put that back to a uh, normal time. Yeah, so it's already going dark, and we've only got one dwarf, and we haven't even uh, done anything yet, which is fantastic. I can't actually build that yet. You can't use any materials until it's been put back into the stockpile. So, yeah, I need to wait until he gets this stone back into the stockpile, which will be now by the look of it. Fantastic. Right, now we can go ahead and craft. Now, this might actually open up our second dwarf as we do this. So that's That's pretty good. Uh, let's show you the tech tree actually before we uh, crack on. So here's the tech tree. It is huge. Yeah, it is massive There's a lot of stuff to work towards So you've got all this stuff here and the high-end stuff the master weapon me, me for working etc etc But to unlock all that you need to go through the basic stuff So as you can see uh, we've only got basic tool making to start off with so what we need to do is we need to start making uh, a few of these which is what we're going to be doing now so let's see, we've got plenty of wood, and we've got two stone. So let's go ahead and build uh, build the pickaxe. Now what you can do is you click on the blueprint. You don't actually have to have the blueprint. Um, you can, if you know if you know it off by heart, you can actually just put it in the slot. That's not a big deal. But you still need to have have access to that technology to begin with anyway. So, you know, it's, it's fine. But what you can also do is you can click on the ingredient and it will actually take you to the page where the ingredient is kept. Then you click and drag. Yeah. Now you can do that separately if you want. Or you can also double click the material. That's the same material of the adjacent materials. And it will automatically put them in, which is really nifty. There we go. So we've got... Ooh, it's that one. So now we've got a pickaxe. Now some materials and tools um, don't actually need time to make, they'll just be made straight away, which is fantastic. But some will require the use of a forge, a smithy, etc, etc. So, this dude now has a pickaxe. Now, uh, we've just leveled up, we gained, a, we gained a dwarf and some niceties. Did we actually gain any? No, we didn't. Oh, interesting. What did we actually gain then? Uh, nothing but the look of it. That's unfortunate. We are going to make a few clubs though. We need some weaponry to defend ourselves. Let's go ahead and make two. Now as you can see, each time I make something from the category of this, it will actually increase the experience. Now, depending on what you make, the experience game will be different. So as you saw then, I actually made um, two lots of clubs. But the more you make of the same item, the less experience you're getting for it. So it's best to diversify. So we haven't actually made a stone axe yet. And we won't actually be able to until we get more stone. Which is unfortunate. But at least now my dwarfs are going to be equipped with um, weapons. Now he's a carpenter. Cool. I don't think I've actually ever had a carpenter before without uh, the use of a skill book. Okay. And now it's going dark. And now this is a problem. And uh, you'll soon see why this is a problem. Nasty things come out during the dark, and I mean really nasty things, and we're in a bad situation here because <laughs> we don't have a base yet, and that is something we need to get done now. 
So we'll definitely get that done now. I was actually hoping you put down the stockpile first, you bastard. Oh well. Alright, so what we need to do is we need to build a um, base, which is what I'm going to do here. So we're going to uh, multitask this to be done. Like so. That will do. We're going to need to uh, have a back wall as well. So that's actually the great thing about this. There's actually a front wall and a back wall. That's pretty useful in some cases. Um, but for a base, you need to have a back wall all over to actually have it as a complete home. So bear that in mind. Alright, let's see what we can make now. Yes, now we can make our axe. What I'll probably do is I'll make one axe and then another pickaxe. Like so. So we got that there. And then all I need to do is make that there and plant that there. And there's a pickaxe. And we just finished basic uh, tool making, which is going to give us more XP. Fantastic. Now, we have access to basic woodworking and a basic furnishing. Great. So now we can start making beds, which is really important now. Since we um, have no way to recover HP, in fact, the only way to recover HP usually is via the beds. Um, you might be able to unlock some um, healing potions via alchemy um, eventually, but I haven't got around to getting that far yet, which is unfortunate. Now we are going to need some ladders as well, so let's go ahead and actually craft uh, five ladders. There we go. Fantastic. Uh, we're going to need a hatch as well, so let's go ahead and build one hatch. And that's actually basic woodworking already done. Fantastic. Alright, now what have we got? What have we, what have we got from that now? Oh, we've got another level up, so that means we get some berries, another pickaxe. Uh, for some reason, he's missing. I'm not 100% sure why, but it looks absolutely hilarious. Okay, I don't know if that's intentional or not. I'm pretty sure it's not. I'm pretty sure it did spell it. I'm sure it was spelled right the previous version, but it, it's not now for some reason. Okay, basically illuminating. So now we've got access to torsion and stuff, and we've also got access to basic armor. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to use any of that just yet. <coughs> <coughs> so once this next one spawns, we'll go ahead and equip stuff. And then we've dug a tunnel. Yay, we dig tunnels. Diggy, diggy holes. Right, so you're a miller. Okay, we're actually getting some really useless professions at the moment. Uh, none of these can really be used yet. I think the cops might actually... No, that's the logger, isn't it? God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. Right, let's see what else we can make. Well, I'm going to need another... I'm going to need another club now. So let's go ahead and... Um, yeah, you can actually double-click it and it shows you the stats as well as uh, some flavour text usually, which is nice. And go ahead and build that. We we're also going to need a bed, at least just one bed for the time being. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. And some leaves. Just enough leaves to make one bed. Now, as you've probably noticed as well, um, placeable items will actually go straight then to your hotbar unless it's full, of course. Now, we do have access to another spell as well. So there we go. Let's get that there. Okie dokie. So, next thing we need to actually do is get this dirt. And we need to actually plop this on the back wall. So I'm going to plop that there. Once more dirt has been stuck at the point of the stockpile. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick a portal edge for quick access. There we go. And now I'm going to plop that there like so. Fantastic. This is coming along really nicely. Okie dokie. Right, let's see what else we can do. I'm supposed there's no um, enemies yet. There's usually a lot of enemies by now. Bad stuff really does come out at night. Oh, okay, there's one there. That's just standing there like a retard. There's one there. Ooh, a book! So, uh, let me just pause this, actually. I wish there was a bloody... Yeah, there we go. Let's... Yeah, that's how you pause it, guys. You uh, fast-forward it. Okay, so as you just noticed... Uh, there's a skill book. Yeah, I can't click it because I've paused it. Uh, this one's a swimmer's book. Increase the time you can hold your breath underwater. Use to increase the skill for a selected dwarf. So, what we can do now, if we really want to, which I suppose I could, is I can use this uh, book on any of them, really. I'm just probably, I'm probably not going to bother. Swimming is not the best kind of skill to have. But, it, we'll just keep it there for the time being. It's no big deal. 
Okie dokie. So, right, that's all allowed out now, which is fantastic. Ooh, there's a scary, scary ghost there. Uh, they're, they're fine, they just try and knock stuff from your storage, and that's pretty much it. They're not really a threat. Got some roots, we've got some more stone, we've got some grain, we need rope. We definitely need rope for a lot of things, so we'll definitely get to that soon. Can we make that yet? No, we can't, we need more wood. That's a shame, we can probably be there to get more wood. While well, they're doing nothing. Alright, so now we need the hatch, which apparently I haven't got. Oh, we just knocked it off, haven't we? Bastard. Just knocked it out of our stockpile. So I need to wait for that to go back into the stockpile before I uh, plonk it down. But what I can do is I can plonk it down in the ladders. Now, dwarfs are pretty sturdy. They will try and climb up things, uh, especially if there's a back wall. It's a lot easier for them to climb a back wall than it is a side. But having a ladder just prevents any damage that they can take if they fall. So, you know, bear that in mind. You can also get a skill, uh, the climbing skill as well, which is fantastic for stuff like that. So, yeah. We might need more stone as well, so I think we're going to go ahead and plonk the pool over here. If I plonk it there, I can start mining this bit of stone here as well as this bit of stone. This is actually really superb. This a lot of um, this massive hill here with a lot of stone. Really superb. Okay. There's another ghost there. Go and kill it. Kill it. Kill it. You can designate to um, kill stuff as well. Normally the warriors will just go ahead and kill them anyway. They're pretty good at defending. But um, yeah, as you can see, the ghost is just floating in the bloody wall. So we can't exactly kill him. Uh, that was actually... It's really lucky we've got that high um, wall there. Otherwise that big bastard would have come in there. Probably murdered us. So we got lucky there, really. Ooh, these trees are growing as well. As you probably already noticed as well, um, trees... You can't exactly put and grow seeds in the game, but if you've got earth and it's left in the direct sunlight and whatever, whatever yeah, then stuff will actually automatically grow. And then you've got stuff like beetles that will randomly pop from trees sometimes when, when you try and uh, chop them down, which is pretty cool. Well, right, there's our stone. Okay, we've got some stuff. We've got some cobwebs. That's interesting. Where do we get that cobweb? Hmm, that's really interesting. There we've got that cobweb. Anyway, there's more stone here. Mr. Derpy Derp's doing nothing there for some reason. Alright, we're going to need some light. And that's one thing we're going to do now. We're going to go ahead and make some torches. So, let me find the torches. Let's try and find some torches. There we go. So we get one piece of wood. And one resin. One resin. There we go. And that'll craft four torches for each one. Let's go ahead and get 20, and that's going to be plonked straight there. Fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and plonk one probably here and here. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and stick a bed there. Uh, yeah, it's probably... Oh, but God's sake, there's stuff growing there. This is the only problem with walls of um, dirt. Stuff can still grow there, so you need to bear that in mind. Dwarfs only sleep in beds locations, so the shelter. Yeah, we're going to designate this as a shelter in a bit, but we need to put an hatch down as well. Hatches are really useful. Really useful. If you've got an hatch down, then the um, monsters and shit will actually attack that first, usually. And that gives you time, your your dwarfs time to counter attack while they're trying to do that. The AI is not exactly smart. Let's just say that. <laughs> but even so, it's still quite a nice. Uh, still quite nice to be able to do that. <laughs> right, let's have a look. Oh yes, we can make more beds now. So the really you want to make a bed for each dwarf because they do claim beds. So bear that in mind. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's make two more beds. There we go. We'll plop them down there, like so. Um, let's go ahead and kill this um, slug as well. Snail, not slug. It's not a slug because it's got a shell on its back. It's a snail. God damn it, thing. Okay, well at least they're at least they're actually mining some stone now. Fantastic. Let's see what else we can make. Uh, we do need to make some more tools. I just need to check see what's got, who's got what. Okay, so we need we need two more axes. 
So let's go ahead and build two more axes. There we go. One, two. And how are we doing for pickaxes? One. Oh, they've all got pickaxes. That's fantastic. So that's pretty much everyone uh, kits it with basic gear at the moment. So we can't really make any armor. Armor is extremely useful though, and we will be making it. Uh, just not yet. We need a steady supply of wood before we even think about doing that. Uh, which actually brings me to my next question. Brings me to my next question. <laughs> brings me to the next thing I need to do, and that is to hunt. We need to go ahead and hunt some wool. We might as well get some leather as well while we're at it. The bulls give leather, the sheep give wool. The chickens are actually pretty good as well. They give um, eggs and feathers, which is pretty useful. So let's go ahead and do that. Normally, this would be the hunter's job, but we don't have an hunter yet. So, yeah. And he's being very inefficient about that. In fact, he's, he, he, yeah, he's being extremely inefficient about that. We should probably not attack boars until we get a hunter. God damn it. Well, there's a fish in there. And yes, you can actually fish as well for fish, which is fantastic. Uh, but we do need more wood. I'll probably let these grow actually. Let me see. Okay. Let me, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's doing the. He's giving the long way up like a retard. He should have just waited for me to put a portal down. Speaking of portals, let's go ahead and put another one down here so we can get that uh, that sheep. There's another one over there, but that's fine. Uh, there's also a couple of uh, trees here which we might as well exploit. There we go. Fantastic. Everyone's got something to do, and that is what I like to see. Um, happy dwarfs doing stuff. Okay then guys, so I'm going to stick a quick in here, I'm going to check the uh, sound and whatnot, and then I'll, uh, I'll see you next episode.